Uh, good afternoon, everyone. No, 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 no. Good afternoon, everyone. As what was said, my name is Jordan Coleman, and it's an honor and a pleasure to be here in front of you guys today. And um, my freshman year, I took an African American performing arts class here at American. And our final was to uh, create a performance for our class. And I immediately thought of doing a poem. As I was sitting in class, I saw how uh, a lot of African Americans were able to make such great work, even though they faced such hard obstacles. And um, as I was writing my poem, I didn't know really what I wanted to write about. So I did draft after draft after draft after draft. And then I took the time and I realized that if you want to make something good, you have to take the proper steps to get there. Now, everyone has different dreams, so the steps may vary. But I feel step one should always be to accept your failures as a learning experience instead of a measurement of your progression. I feel too many people get discouraged when they fail for the first time. But if you truly think about it, what if Michael Jordan gave up? What if Jackie Robinson gave up? What if President Barack Obama gave up when he failed for the first time? See, failure is something that we can use to measure our strengths and weaknesses. Once I was able to take a step back and fully understand my failures, I was able to move on to step two, which was to have a, a, a vision of the outcome. Now, it's easier said than done to have the light at the end of the tunnel or to see an outcome, but it helps you get through the times when you're struggling the most. And once I was started to write my poem and I was able to take a step back, see my failures, learn from them, and have a vision of the outcome, I was able to move on to step three, which was trusting the process. Now, my high school football coach, he was a good family friend before he became the football coach at my school. So I thought it was a little easier for me to become one of the leaders on the team. Wrong. I sat the bench the first four games of the season, of my senior year, and I was pissed. I was ready to quit. And as I was putting my helmet inside the locker room, coach pats me on the shoulder and says, trust the process. He didn't know I was getting ready to quit that same day. But sure enough, short of practice, Go to game day, trust the process, sit the bench for the fifth game. But as I'm sitting the bench on the fifth game, my opportunity appears. They need the backups backup. I finished that game, started the next. Next thing you know, I'm a captain. I'm being recognized as one of the top players in the league. I trust the process. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because when you're in the midst of grinding and working and trying to see your goal, you don't realize that you're preparing yourself for your opportunity when it comes. And luckily for me, I was able to trust the process, understand why I was wrong, and move on to step four, which is to have the blinders on when you're working. Now, step four was pretty hard for me because, just like everybody in college, it's full of distractions. And when I was writing my poem, there was a lot of different distractions that I faced. But luckily, I was able to put the blinders on and get the things done that I needed to get done. Now, step five is to finish strong. I mean, let's be honest. Whenever we see the finish line, we tend to slow down. But we can't. It's the fourth quarter. We got to get it done. We've been working way too hard mentally and physically to stop. Let's get it done. So after I went through all my steps, I finished my poem and I recited it to the class. But by the time I was reciting it to the class, I was so mentally and physically prepared for it that I wasn't even nervous. So as I take the time to stand in front of you guys today, I would like to take the time to uh, recite my poem. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I sit back and wonder, is this a waste? I mean, we get lectured and forever pressured into a world full of haste and the chase, to chase the American dream. But see, that's the part that got me bent. Because when they say the American dream, I'm not so sure what they meant. Because how could my American dream be the same dream that he dreamt or she dreamt? See, that logic isn't concrete in a world full of cement. You see what I'm saying? And I swear every time I have my eyes closed, I see them remembering me for multiple creations, like, like, like I'm some sort of Picasso and God knows God knows if I get my chance or should I say when because then I'm speaking into existence. But when I get my chance, you're not going to miss this. For instance, the distance between me and this Hollywood entrance shows the difference between I and those who are oh so pretentious. My mother told me to whom much is given, much is expected. But it's hard to give back the world as a pearl because the world wants a baby shot down and arrested. Drop down is the message. Black males were only meant to fail. At least that's what America the beautiful expected. 
So when I tell her I want to make music, she says that's foolish. Go to college, get a degree for yourself. But as I sit and lit, I wonder if all this shit is a degree to your wealth. But don't get me wrong, I want to write essays as much as the next, but is this, oh you say MLA the format of me in the future getting these checks? Oppressed. Oh, pressed. Oh, pressed for time, rent's doing minimum wage, isn't doing it. Oh, press nine, I was having a good day to IRS just ruined it. What? Oh, press my tie. Because the only iron my people use gets us put behind the iron. Black male doing something with his life? Oh, press charges. That's how we keep them oppressed. Oh, pressed. But cool out, young black man. <laughs> They're waiting for you to black, like the rest of your kind that don't know how to act. You know those who sold drove have run a little crack, corner stores a corner horse showing and blowing to put clothes on their back. They think it's all a game, like we all the same. I told my mom the only halls I'm walking is to see my picture in the Hall of Fame. Now I done seen shifts that could leave a sailor seasick. Made out my hood in one piece, but they still see me as three-fifths. And nowadays we argue about the dark skin and light skin, but didn't Dr. King give his life so there's no such thing as the right skin? Instead of trying to unite skin, we fight skin. How about we pick a war we might win if we fight in, and just to make it all complete, we all compete, instead of being one team. But that's what happens when everyone in America chases the same American dream. Thank you. <laughs>